Going to Sweet World, the best uh, NetSuite conference ever. What's your favorite thing about Sweet World? Uh, free crap. Duh. <laughs> Everything. Everything? Of course. Yes, it's awesome. That's All I want to do host. is be bigger. Never forget Kendall. <laughs> I'm mostly looking forward to meeting with customers. That's my favorite thing to do. I love hearing their stories. I always get inspired. They're always doing things that I never thought we could have done with NetSuite. So as a business to partner with, Oracle NetSuite very strong. We've learned so much, we've grown so much, and most of all, we've been able to help our customers so much. It's your go-to dance move in Vegas. I want to thank everybody our customers, our partners, and employees for coming to Sweet World of 2018. Thanks, Sweet World 18. It's a deal uh, out. Hello, Sweet World. Please welcome Senior Vice President of Marketing and Strategy, Jason Maynard. Hey, how's everybody doing? How about that Purple Rain intro? Was that not amazing or what? That was so cool. All right, Thursday, 9.30 keynote, the last day of Sweet World, and you're all here. I was so worried. You guys came, I'm so happy. Thank you guys. Now look, I have a special shout out. I was watching some of you come in, and you were wearing the same thing you were wearing to the gala. I love that. That's so cool. All the people who had their cell phone set as their alarm clock from the hotel, I'm with you guys. Now, where's Amber? Amber, raise your hand. Where is she? I'm worried about you guys. Where, are you around here? Amber, come on, Amber, get out here. Let's go. All right, I understand. We don't have mimosa machines right now. We don't have blood. We have Amber. So if you are in the middle of the keynote, being a little tired for whatever reason, She's gonna come there and take care of you. Amber, thank you. Just raise your hand, she'll come by and we'll get going. All right, thank you very much. Got a really good week. We got a lot more today. The show's still going, a lot of exciting things. But first, something that's not so exciting. The Safe Harbor Statement. So here's what I want you to do. While the Safe Harbor Statement is up, just close your eyes, do it with me, and imagine a shirtless Dave Navarro. Oh yeah! Isn't he good looking? He's a good looking man. All right. Safe Harbor, we made it through. All right, last night, who had fun? The Sweet Crew with Evan? Come on. All the way from the Philippines, you guys. Crushed it. Really, that was, that was fantastic. And Macy Gray singing Rapture by Blondie. Did you guys think that was gonna happen? I didn't, I didn't know that. And of course, my favorite band of all time now, Blink-182 with Mark Hoppus. 
He's gunning for the CMO job really hard, you can tell. Love that guy. All right. And did you notice how many photos? I think we got one up here with uh, Jim in the front row in the mosh pit. That's how our boss rolls. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but there's a rumor going around that Luda and Jim, Del Boomy Diamond, McGeever, may drop something a little later. I don't know. Yes. But I got to say, you guys were a little rowdy last night, a little rowdier than I expected. Fortunately, everybody made it back OK. We had no issues except for one guy. Yet again, we had an issue with Sweet Stanley. Stanley, unfortunately, stared too long in the eyes of Dave Navarro, tripped, fell, and got his gloves caught on the nipple rings. Dave's fine. Don't worry about Dave. He's OK. Stanley was supposed to be in my keynote. We're not sure if he's going to make it in, but we're hopeful. But anyway, last night was a blast. I hope you guys had a lot of fun. We sure did as well. All right, so we can't put on a great show like this without thanking all of our sponsors, Deloitte Digital, Del Boomi, everybody else who makes it great. What I also think is so cool about our sponsors is they're here for you. All the alliance partners, all the channel partners, the SDN partners, they bring the solutions together. They make things work for you. So again, thank you guys so much. We do really appreciate all that you do for our customers. I want to give you a couple other updates. Alex's lemonade stand. You guys did it. $50,000 plus we raised. Give yourself a big round of applause. Very cool. Keep sharing away. But just because we hit our goal doesn't mean that we have to stop. So Alex, LemonadeStand.org, slash Sweet World. You can go. Keep donating. It's a great cause. We really appreciate all you're doing for, the, uh, for Alex's. All right. We have a lot to cover over the last couple days, right? We heard a lot of cool stuff about how we were going global. Really exciting new technologies. You know, really interesting things we're doing across the entire spectrum. Financials, new things we're doing in China. Really good stuff there. We had some cool stuff around vertical automation, bringing all these new capabilities. You saw stuff for product industries. You saw things for service-based industries. Covered the whole gamut. New analytics, new dashboards. Lots of goodness there that I want you guys to keep checking out. One of the other things, did you guys go to the, the booth and check out the new Intelligent Suite demo? NetSuite is getting smarter. Evan and the team are working on a, some really new cool AI and ML capabilities. Keep checking this stuff out. We've got a lot of new applications that are getting rolled out over the next couple of releases. And last but not least, we, you knew we were going to go here. It's crazy dealing day. Oh, yes, yeah. Let's go. All right. It wouldn't be a NetSuite keynote if it wasn't super cheeserific. Thank you guys for getting me my ballyhoo. Now, we are making progress, obviously, with this new Sweet Commerce product. And I want to just cue the video up again one more time because, you know, you guys had questions. What do you think about the product? Let's roll it to my buddy Mark. NetSuite is by far my favorite cloud based e solution. That's right. We are the number one sweet commerce, commerce solution by Blink-182, all right? Take that, Magento. See if you got that, all right? Now listen, we said the first 1,000 co customers that sign up for sweet commerce will get their implementation included, right? We're making progress. So if the phone lines are busy when you call your account rep, you just got to keep dialing, OK? Just keep calling. You'll get through. Don't worry. We got you covered. All right. So that's a little bit about what we talked about the last couple of days. I'm going to tell you a little bit about sort of our mission and what we're thinking about and some of the new ideas we had. So we've been examining the drivers of growth, right? We've been looking at the things that cause success and failure in a business. And one question that everyone seems to be asking is, is this really the golden age of entrepreneurship? If it's so easy to start a business, why is it so hard to scale? Now, Jim talked a little bit about this on Tuesday, but I want to get to the core because this is the true north of what we do. We want to help entrepreneurs succeed. We want to help your business grow. And so our mission here is to find those things, find those levers. What can we do to help you be more successful? So I'm going to share with you a little data that uh, we've been looking at around this trend. So first up, it is actually, if you look at the number of venture capital deals and the amount of VC funding 
arguably the easiest time ever to start a business, right? Technology costs are cheaper. So many things make it easier to get started. Nearly three times as many venture back deals as there was just 10 years ago. So from that standpoint, you'd think everything is roses. But what's interesting is that the number of companies that raise around don't actually move on to get their subsequent round of financing, right? The failure rate is actually much higher than people would expect. You're seeing a lot of startups really crash and burn and not get that escape velocity and be able to go on and raise their next round of financing. Now, that's the venture back world. If you look across actually the IPO market, you're seeing it here as well, right? We're not seeing the number of IPOs that we had just 30 years ago, right? There are a lot of reasons for this. You know, you can look at Sarbanes-Oxley regulation. You can look at global competition. There's an increased role of private equity in terms of providing late stage financing. But across the board, we're not seeing capital formation happen in the public markets. Now going public has benefits to a lot of stakeholders. This is a trend that we think is not good in terms of broad job creation and really disseminating a lot of the wealth that comes with successful IPOs. But the problem actually is not just in the venture world. We actually looked at the broader market. There was a study from Brookings Institute that actually measured the number of companies that are starting a business and the number of companies that are shutting down. And if you look over the last 30 years, the trend is actually shockingly negative. You're seeing basically about the same number of companies start that actually shut down in a given year, right? This is not a good sign. Now, I don't want you to think it's actually just a US problem. Unfortunately, it's actually a global phenomena. We're seeing this trend across all major economies. And so what's, what's strange here is despite record unemployment in the US, despite a broader economic environment that looks pretty good, you're actually seeing things like wage gains not keeping pace. We think when the world is less entrepreneurial, it creates a negative ripple effect that impedes opportunity, right? Opportunity, not just to start, but opportunity to grow and scale and create jobs. So it's definitely a trend that we don't like the direction of. One of my friends, author, podcaster, Christopher Lockhead, has a quote. And he says, for some, entrepreneurship is not a way up, but actually a way out, right? We know that small companies make up two thirds of jobs in this country. Startups provide that opportunity for people who might otherwise have that way out. New companies bring opportunities to hire. Opportunity is what is the engine for economic growth. It's what creates jobs. It, what's what lifts up our economy. It more importantly is what lifts up our society. So as you guys all know, NetSuite was founded on this premise. And so we've been looking at this issue. and We've been trying to figure out ways that we can help solve this problem besides just products and services that we're delivering. So one of the things that we always go through at the end of Sweet World is we come down off that Sweet World high, that Sweet World euphoria. And we say, hey, look, you're always going to hear great strategy and insights from Jim. You're going to get amazing technology, and you're going to see what the product does from Evan. But I would argue the number one reason you all come to Sweet World, it's the connections you make with other people. Right? It's the connections and relationships you build with entrepreneurs who are just like yourself. You all are very, much, very successful. You're in this room. You're in a thriving business. And you get a lot of benefit from actually interacting and learning from your peers. But the problem is this madness of Sweet World is only four days a year. You know, we want this party to keep going on and on because the, the connections and the relationships that you're making here are the things that we think also help you fuel your, fuel your growth. So we decided to do something a little different, and we wanted to come up with a way to make NetSuite live not just in your heart, right? I know it's there, but we wanted, Net, we wanted Sweet World to be 24 by 7, 365 days a year, and bring those resources to you. So that's why I'm so excited to announce we're officially launching this new media platform called GrowWire. GrowWire will tell you stories from folks who have been in your shoes. Hopefully, it'll have some stories from you as well. You're going to be able to listen, watch, read, and pick up nuggets that'll help you achieve everything you're capable of. You can then hopefully tell your story, pass on your knowledge to the next person, and let's make this startup scaling problem a thing of the past. I think we can do it. We're going to need your help. But what I want to do first is I want to bring up the GrowWire team to tell you about all the goodness in here. So with that, I'd like to bring up the team. First, come up on stage with me. Susie Strutner, Kendall Fisher, Kylie Singh. Come on, ladies. Welcome. Welcome to Sweet World. 
Watch out, this is real water. Woo. All right. So Susie Struttner, how you doing? I'm a little nervous, but I'm mostly good. <laughs> Susie's been with us for less than, what, 60 days? Yeah. First time on stage, but you're gonna kill it. Thanks. All right, <laughs> tell us about GrowWire. What have you built? Okay, I built a website. So GrowWire at its core is a website, and it's a toolkit of stories to help you grow your big ideas and your business. We know that stories are the best way to learn, so we've collected them from experts across all industries and brought them to life on this awesome website. Some of my favorite stories on the website right now are, um, it's like a tell-all sort of from the producer of Fear Factor. Uh, we also have an analysis of if bots are ever gonna fully replace us at work from a Sand Hill software VP. And we have an entrepreneurial tell-all from a female founder of four companies in the last 20 years. There's really great stories and I've talked to a lot of great people over these last 60 days and written them all down for you. All right. I know. What else? One of my favorite sections is called Businesswoman, and it's dedicated to women with big ideas and big jobs. Um, GrowWire is gonna be a community, so it's a place for you to share the success that you've found, pass it along to the next person, and learn from everyone else in the community. So a couple of my favorite stories in this section are a Q&A with the SVP of content at E! News, and um, some really practical, real life tips from a woman entrepreneur who learned how to give up this need to be perfect. That's awesome. We also have the Grow Lab. Oh yeah. Personal fave. Um, here we know that when you are scaling your business, it's very helpful to look at what other peers in your industry have done. So we're working with this awesome firm called Finlistics to gather key operational metrics across industries and map them out for you. So you can visit this very fun, obviously colorful section of the site and have some really easy to understand metrics to understand where you fall within your industry. So if I was like a retailer or something or a software company, I could go look at these like industry benchmarks you see, could. see what the averages are and compare to what I'm doing. You could, and look how little writing there is. It's just so easy. Oh, There's wow. like five points on this easy to read chart. All right. It's cool. Nice. And how could we be legit without a newsletter? We have a growwire.com newsletter where you can get a fresh baked batch of GrowWire's top stories to your inbox every week. If you go to growwire.com right now, you can click subscribe in the upper right hand corner and we'll send you a short and fun roundup of our top stories. Is that it? No, Jason. Oh, jeez. Not it. <laughs> um, we do have a podcast, if you're a podcast person, hosted by none other than Jason himself. He's going to sit down with growth experts across an equally diverse array of industries and hear their stories. He's been filming the first few episodes here at Sweet World in the Blue Mic Center, so that's actually going to be up very soon. This is not a drill. i got to get to work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got to make some phone calls. But of course, that's still not all. Kendall, tell them about the Grow Show. Hello, sweet world. Don't worry, front row, I'm not gonna interview you. But uh, Joel on the street, if you're out there, we do still love you, okay? Um, all right, you guys, so I'm stoked that all of you are the first to hear about the launch of our new series, The Grow Show, dedicated to, you guessed it, or you might have guessed it incorrectly, but either way, it's about businesses and big ideas from people just like you. In fact, you're the sole reason we're doing this. Evan Goldberg, sitting right there, hey Evan, he built this company on the foundation of helping people like you achieve your dreams. So we created The Grow Show to tell those stories, from start to finish, all the challenges and so celebrations and everything in between. So with that being said, I am so excited that you guys get the first look at our pilot episode of The Grow Show, featuring our very own customer sitting right here in the audience, The Downtown Project. Roll it. We traveled to downtown Las Vegas to meet up with leaders from the Downtown Project, a privately funded for-profit enterprise dedicated to helping revitalize downtown Las Vegas. So get in and buckle up, it's about to be one hell of a ride. It's been great to help re-energize and redevelop and reinvest in the neighborhood. First unique and best is what we always aim for with all of our projects. Yeah. I think Downtown Project has helped accelerate that redevelopment timeline in a lot of ways. You just gave me the chills about three times and you guys, it's about 98 degrees out here. We are here at Corduroy with Chris Gutierrez, AKA Mr. Good Hair. <laughs> are you scared? A little. Ah! Oh my gosh. We're getting a private behind the scenes tour here, people. He didn't come downtown. I just remember people saying, like, get back before it turns dark. Really, we saw Container Park. I looked up at the sign, and I looked around, and there's people with strollers and kids, and I was like, okay, something's really going on here, and I gotta be a part of this. 
Bill Clinton came in and had a bite at this vegan cafe not long ago. Does anybody else know that, that Bill Clinton was a vegan? Because I didn't. We also count the strollers that come through, and I think to date we've had about 50,000 strollers in, in Container Park. We are actually in the MTV Real World Las Vegas suite, which is amazing. Downtown is now a location you go to and you can bounce around to a lot of different places and a lot of different venues and have a lot of experiences. Winner, me. Everybody's been raving about this unicorn grilled cheese. Oh, brother. Where else are you gonna see a 55-foot mantis spewing fire? Downtown Las Vegas is the only 55-foot praying mantis that's gonna spew fire, so we you might as well come. All right. <laughs> Kendall, congratulations. Thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, if you guys want to watch the full episode featuring the Downtown Project, make sure to go to growwire.com. And don't forget, you can still tell your story by visiting me in the Blue Mike Center all day today. Thanks, all right. you guys. So that's the first episode. We've got a ton more planned. We're going to be doing this, so keep your eyes out. Lots more to come. You're going to be busy, I hear. So yeah. really cool. Mm -hmm. Now, we've got a bunch of new things. The last question is, where can we find all this? Kylie. Yes, so we're on social media and we want to build a community with you guys. It's not a one-way conversation, it's a two-way conversation. And we want to hear your stories, triumphs, challenges, and everything in between. Follow us or you can connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube at GrowWire. And message us if you want to be featured. We'd love to hear your story. All right, well, thank you guys very much. I appreciate it. Congratulations, team. And I think we have a little GrowWire swag. Did we put that on the chairs there? So if you see the white t-shirts right here up in front, throw that on, wear that around with pride. We're going to see some more cool stuff here. So ladies, thank you very much. Congratulations on launching GrowWire. Thank you. Way to go. All right. So GrowWire. So we're building a media platform to tell your stories. I really am excited. I want to hear your stories. So please connect with us and let's make this really cool and all about you. Now. You guys probably have one question, I would think, with this whole thing, right? The thing on everybody's mind. Like, how was that grilled cheese sandwich with the unicorns, right? A unicorn grilled cheese sandwich? That seems kind of crazy. And fortunately, I think we've got the, the downtown project team right here. Hey, guys, how you doing? Let's shine a light on them. Oh, you guys brought me one? You bought, brought me a unicorn grilled cheese sandwich? I'm surprised. Wow, you guys are the best. How you doing? Come here. Look in the mic. Look here. How's everybody doing? Good. Thanks for coming. Travis, I, I saw your dance moves. You look great on the show. You got, got good styles. All right, so this is actually a this unicorn grilled cheese sandwich. Can I taste it? Yeah. Take me to Flavor Town. We're going. All right. I washed my hands. You washed your hands? Okay, look at all the cheese in here. Hold on. Oh. Oh, this is good. You want a bite of it? You good? You want some? Yeah, yeah? All right. All right, it's a lot of cheese. You want a napkin? When we rehearsed this, we didn't actually use a grilled cheese sandwich. I feel like I'm in your video here trying to say sweet people. Did you guys? Yeah, I didn't know this was live television, did you? Next Gen Analytics. All right. Oh, brother, that was good. All right. You guys, thank you so much. You're doing amazing work in downtown Las Vegas, turning the neighborhood around. Sweet World's gonna be over today, but Aaron, you wanna tell people about what we got planned? We gotta keep that party going. We gotta keep the party going tonight. Given, if you come downtown, come down to Corduroy. We're gonna do 50% off, you can just show your badge. 50% off, keep this party rolling. All right, 50% off if you go to Corduroy Bar. Mr. Goodhair will be there. You know, the awesome guy, he, like he's fantastic, right? And you're gonna get a free, Pickleback shot, not a Nickelback shot, not the not the Canadian rockers. Pickleback, what you know? Can I ask what is in a pickleback shot? It's whiskey and pickle juice. Whiskey and pickle juice. It tastes way better than it sounds. It's good. Trust me. You guys saw the video. All right, downtown project team. Thank you guys very much. I appreciate it. You're the best. Thanks so much for playing along. All right, that was actually really good. Sorry to make a mess up here. Okay, so. We launched GrowWire, and part of GrowWire is to tell stories. So what we thought we'd do today is tell a few stories about some great business leaders, some great opportunities that these people have created. We're going to get kick, kicked it off with a little bit of something from some of our friends from Australia. One of the companies that uh, you may have heard of, 
may not, but you're going to learn a lot more about him today, our friends at ESOP, Troy Smith from ESOP. Troy, please come up on stage. Troy, how are you doing? Welcome. Nice. Thanks Good. for coming. How are you? I'm doing great. So, you guys have been through some amazing growth. We have. You guys have some great products. Before we get started, do you guys have any cool eucalyptic cream for anything up here, maybe? We, we do health and beauty products. We're not miracle workers. We can't help you at all. Oh, oh. He didn't rehearse that one on me earlier. No, we did not. All right. <laughs> yeah. I thought I was going to get him. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. So tell, tell the folks a little bit about ESOP and some of the, the amazing stories and growth that you had. Yeah. For those that don't know ESOP, we were started in Melbourne, Australia in about 1987. Um, we are a luxury uh, cosmetics business selling body care, hair care, and of course skin care, which is the majority of our business. Um, from a channel perspective, we have our own network of retail stores across the globe in 22 countries. Uh, we of course sell uh, to some wholesale accounts as well. We have a big online presence and we also sell to what's called amenity accounts, uh, which is, you know, we put our product in hotels, restaurants and some airlines um, and that's effectively our form of advertising. We don't do any traditional advertising at all. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, from a product perspective, we try to put all our efforts into making the best products we can. Um, our packaging is very minimal, so we don't want to detract from the product itself. Uh, and from a customer perspective, I think what makes us unique is we focus on something that's pretty rare nowadays, and that's customer service in stores. And we try to make our customers feel welcome, uh, and we respect their intelligence uh, and, and their knowledge of our products. Yeah. We've got on, on the screen behind us some shots of uh, various stores across the globe. Yeah. Maybe talk a little bit about what makes each store so different. Yeah, that's another aspect is every retail store that we have is different. Um, it's not a, cookie co not a cookie cutter approach to our stores. Uh, so we use architects who design the stores to fit into the neighborhoods in each city where the stores are located. Uh, we try to fit in with businesses where the stores are located as well. We partner with those businesses and we work with the community in those areas as well. Uh, so from a store rollout perspective, it makes things quite difficult. Uh, but we really think that sets us apart and hopefully you can see that some of our stores are, are, are pretty special. Yeah, that, that looks amazing. The Kyoto store is phenomenal. So when you expand globally, you're in how many stores? Uh, we're in around, well, 70 cities around the globe, um, and we have roughly 320 retail stores. Wow. So how do you maintain brand integrity as you expand into so many different places with, in, in essence, one-off new creations in every place that you go? Yeah, I think that's where NetSuite comes into it because, um, you know, we don't want to focus on back-end systems and um, stuff that doesn't uh, really impact how we can directly affect a customer. We want um, the rollout of NetSuite across the organization to be smooth and very easy so that we can uh, focus on what matters, which is our customers and getting our stores right. Um, so we have a core model of NetSuite that we roll out uh, and then we, as we go into each market, uh, we, we localize it for each market. Um, and customize it. And so we've got NetSuite deployed, as I said, in 22 countries, I think last count, six languages and 21 currencies. Wow. Yeah. What's the biggest challenge that you face when you go globally? I mean, what's been the, forget about technology, but just anything that you think is sort of the challenge or the, 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 the issue that folks should, should think about as they perhaps expand? Um, besides dealing with people like yourself who uh, think that our product is a miracle product, uh, <laughs> um, no, I think it's just the, the localization, um, especially in some difficult countries like Japan or Korea, uh, Italy, we're about to go into Brazil. Um, so from a technical perspective, to be able to have a product where some of the compliance or security issues are already handled for us or the infrastructure that we don't have to worry about, it makes the deployments really quick, really scalable, really easy. Um, and from a cultural perspective as well, just having the, the multi-language stuff really helps. Japan is a great example of that where um, we could not have deployed a system in English, so because it's all in Japanese, that really, really helps. That's amazing. Maybe last thing, what's the, what's the biggest lesson that you've learned that you could share with the audience? Um, I think uh, we try to limit our, our global core model. Um, we used a partner to help us along the way called Anexa, who are also based in Melbourne, Australia, uh, and they helped us with our uh, rollouts in Australia, in America, in Asia, um, and then we actually partnered directly with NetSuite Professional Services in Europe. Um, but what we tried to do is keep the core model tight 
and consistent around the globe so that when we rolled it out, all we had to do was worry about localizations um, and, and adapting it for any particular market requirements that we needed. That's great. Good stuff. The, the ESA products are amazing. I actually use them at home. Good. Um, and I, I think maybe we ought to bring this story to life. We talk about storytelling and you know making things sort of uh, engaging. Um, I shouldn't be the only one who gets these lovely products. So Certainly not. Can we give some away to the audience? Sure. Can we do that? All right. Let's see here. So it's a little bit of like Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory here. So if you look under your seats, there is a golden ticket, not a golden egg. Okay. Check under your, if, so, if there's an empty seat next to you, check under your neighbor. Raise your hand. Trey, we're giving away a little travel package? Yeah, we're giving away a travel package, uh, which is what we call a jet set kit. Um, yeah. Jet set kit, all right. Stand up if you got a winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner, let's go. Stand up. We got some winners here. Wave your hand like you just don't care. There you go, we got a winner. All right. So if you got a golden ticket, I love that music in the background too, that's good. If you've got a ticket, head out to the Reg Desk where you picked up your backpacks and you can redeem your golden ticket to pick up some very cool ESOP products. Troy, thank you so much for the giveaway, your generosity, your time, pleasure, and being pleasure. a great partner. Thank you. Thank you so much. Pleasure. All right, appreciate it, Troy. Everybody, Troy Smith, thank you. All right. I always wanted to have an Oprah Winfrey moment like that, so that was fun. All right, cool. Next up. Now this, this is an interesting story. If you've been, how many of you guys have been to the Expo Halt? Right, you guys been roaming around. Do you, see the, do you see all these customer activations? We had Corksicles, we had Alex's Lemonade Stand, we had Groupon, we had all sorts of stuff you could do. But we had one I think that was really interesting. So we had a lot of big names there, right? And you'll see some of the photos behind me. We had Bill Walton on Monday, we had Bernie Williams on Tuesday, we had Dennis Rodman on Wednesday. Yes, all of you who are asking me if Jim's keynote was serious about Dennis Rodman being at Sweet World, he, obviously he came, and we got pictures to prove that North Korea localization effort has kicked off. It's all underway, you got it right there. So we're doing that. I'm gonna tell you the story of Steiner Sports. First we're gonna roll to a video and then I'm gonna bring up Kelvin Joseph. So let's hit the video. I'd like to bring up on stage NetSuite customer, business partner, and my buddy, CMO and COO of Steiner Sports, Kelvin Joseph. Kelvin, come on up on stage. Give him a hand. All right. Kelvin. <laughs> Thanks, man. You're looking good. Thanks for coming. Appreciate it, buddy. All good. All right. So people have seen the activation out there and all the athletes. Why don't you tell them a little bit about what Steiner Sports does and how you guys got started? Uh, we're living the dream. We sell happiness. You enjoyed that, right? All right. So Steiner Sports started with $4,000 and like a busted Mac computer in 1987. No money. There was no cell phones. There was no internet. So in order to get in contact with an athlete, it was, it was virtually impossible. You had to have their home phone number and they needed to be home. So it's a really <laughs> amazing business. There's been a lot of transformation. A lot, a lot of people know us for being the world leader in sports um, autograph merchandise, but we also use the power of sports to help businesses grow. So let's do it. Yeah, you know, what I, what I love about Kelvin is whenever we have a conversation, you always talk about the power of experiences. So can you elaborate on that? What does that mean, the power of experiences and how that helps companies grow? Right, so all of you in the audience have, have great businesses, 
but if all you do is talk about your business, it, it makes it less interesting for the people that are, are listening to you talk, right? So at the end of the day, if we talk only about technology for the last four days, it would be kind of boring. But you had a little bit of fun at the rock concert. That was an experience. We're going to have this experience with Magic Johnson. We had this experience with Dennis Rodman. It enhances it. Even something as great as Sweet World could be enhanced. And I try to bring that to a huge company like NetSuite is great, but I try to bring that to smaller businesses and make it doable for them. You place a lot of value on relationships. You are probably one of the most connected people that I know. Can you talk about why that's so important? Well, we've all heard the term, we want to dig our well before we're thirsty. But Let's imagine this relationship. There's a relationship that you might have with a customer or a prospect. Every time you call them or email them, you're asking them for money. Hmm, what kind of relationship is that? You're a bill collector. Don't turn your business into a collection agency. You want to build relationships with people and add that value to their company and help them what they need to deal with, and that's how you get the business. It's almost making friends before you need them. And, and just, can I do a shameless plug? Are those allowed? We've never done okay. a shameless plug here before. So, in why <laughs> so in order for me to build a lot of relationships, I, I use LinkedIn because what people could do is they could connect with me and then um, they could see what I'm doing for other companies and they could say, hmm, that's interesting. Maybe I want that because there's one key thing and this is for all of our businesses. People do not want to be sold but they love to buy, right? <laughs> so I'm not going to sell you on anything, but in this shameless plug, I'm going to give you something. And here it is. You ready? All right. For everyone in this audience, and I checked with accounting, I can afford to do this. You're the COO. I'm going to give everyone in this audience a $50 gift card for their kids for my merchandise business. And for your business, if you connect with me on LinkedIn, I'm going to give you a free growth analysis on how you can use the power of sports to grow. You like that? All right. You like, who wants, all right. We're just giving stuff away up here, folks. <laughs> all right. I want, I want to talk a little bit about your business, though, because your business has been through a transformation, yeah. right? Talk a little bit about how you moved from selling a product to now, obviously, being in effectively the services business. Yeah. It's so interesting. Like, an autograph used to mean that you met an athlete, right? But with technology and the cell phone, if you met someone, you should have a selfie with that person, right? It's all about the experience. Like, oh, I met this person, I have a signed autograph. You know, it's a little different, the world changed a little bit. So people want a picture that they could share on the internet immediately versus a, a signed ball that they could keep um, in their closet. So, so we had to really transition the business. But what I found is that a lot of businesses are trying to get decision makers together. And some of them spend a lot of time doing it. So to get 50 C-level executives in a room, it's been hard for people to do that. So I'll blow into a city and I'll get a, a sports celebrity from that city and then we'll get all the C-level executives in that city in one room at one time. And I've been sa saving sales teams weeks and weeks by doing that. I want to talk a little bit about how you run Steiner, okay? There's a lot going on in your business. How do you maintain focus so that you're narrowing in and zeroing in on the right things? Well, I'll tell you, good help is hard to find, right? But in order for you to stay focused as an executive, you have to have good people. But good people are not going to want to work with you if you're not good. Good to them, encouraging them, and giving them that right culture. The first thing that most entrepreneurs do is they kill the entrepreneurship in their employees by creating all these rules and, and creating all these barriers. So the reality of it is, is that it's so important for me to focus on building that entrepreneurism within the people that are in my organization so I can do my thing, so I can hang out with you. We have the same haircut, you know, it's all good. Brothers from another mother, man. Last question I gotta ask you. Mm -hmm. You look back, what's the one piece of advice you could have told Kelvin, when you just got started in business? What, what's the one pithy thing that you learned? Yeah, I would say this. One thing we should, I would have told myself, and you know, when, when you achieve a lot of success, and um, I didn't come from a lot of success, I had to drag myself up, you, you can't lose yourself in that. 
Our humility needs to exceed our ability. And when we see somebody acting small, we need to be the bigger person and, and show them and be the change that we're trying to see in this world. This world's changing and we need to be a part of that change and we need to drive that change. That's how we're gonna grow. All right, man, I appreciate it. Kelvin, thanks so much, bud. I appreciate it. Kelvin Joseph, Steiner Sports. Thanks, man. Kelvin, <laughs> appreciate it. All right, you guys, was that great or what? Oh, man, we were so blessed and lucky to have him. All right, now, your body may tell you the show is over, but the show ain't over yet, all right? We got a few more hours left in the day, lots of great customer stories, more people you can learn from. Head to the Expo Hall, come visit us at the Blue Mic booth. I want to thank everyone. Everyone at NetSuite wants to thank you for your time, your support. We're really happy to have you all here. Look forward to seeing you guys next year. Go off, go forth. And let's get growing. Thank you. Woo! My God, you fly thousands of miles to get some sun and it's raining and some dawn. Typical tropical. I go on vacation and Mother Nature gives up on me. Yeah, what a lady. Thanks for at least sending it down preheated. Doesn't seem to bother the natives, though. Back home, it gets no one laughing. And here they even sing to it. Must be some voodoo rain chant or something. <laughs> and it sure sounds familiar. Oh, well. I'm singing in the rain. Just singing in the rain. What a glorious feeling. I'm happy again. I'm laughing at clouds. So dark. Sun's in my head.